What's happening everyone, and Nick here from TV Boxed Up with a brand new unboxing and review of another Amlogic S905X4 TV Box. This is the latest X96X4 and it's a 4GB, 32GB model running on Android 11 operating system and it has an RGB lighting feature. There is also a 4GB, 64GB model. To date, Amlogic's new chipset is having good compatibility with the new Android 11 operating system and it's left to the firmware developers to implement and optimize their firmware to take advantage and deliver the best features to their customers. So in this detailed review, we look at its hardware and features, its performance benchmarks and I have some live demonstrations. So stay tuned, that's up next. Welcome back. For a quick unboxing, you have the X4 TV box itself, one infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter. This adapter also comes in EU and UK plug pin types. The appropriate model for your region will be included in your purchase. And it has a user manual. For its design, its body is made of plastic with the X96 branding to the top. It has one HDMI 2.0 port, one RJ45 gigabit LAN port, one optical audio, an AV port and its DC power input to its rear. It's got one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 and a micro SD TF card reader on the side. It has an LED display at the front and below it has a four anti-skid rubber feet with some cooling vents and along the bottom edge you have the RGB lighting display. So I'll just take a moment to set this up and I'll be right back. So I'm all set and upon startup you have a splash screen followed by the default Android animation and then the launcher. This launcher adopts a very basic but attractive design consisting of these main icons that cannot be changed and it has this shortcuts bar below here. It does not have a navigation bar or status bar which comes in very handy for users who prefer to use a controller with a mouse pointer such as an air mouse or mini touchpad keyboard. This wallpaper and the color of its icons matches its RGB lighting feature and they have included an LED control app to adjust its lighting patterns. This firmware, if I head over to the settings area under about, is where you'll see that it's built on the Android 11 SDK and here is its firmware build information. So included in this firmware are features such as 4K 2160p display at 59.98Hz maximum and not 60Hz. As shown here is its true maximum display output detected by my capture card. It has HDR display with the option to select between HDR always on or to set it to adaptive HDR. It has HDMI CEC control options. It has advanced display settings that features a gaming mode. Enabling this feature doesn't change the max resolution to 60Hz, nor does it enable any special features such as Dolby Vision. Under song settings, there is the option to enable audio to play through the optical audio port and the HDMI port simultaneously, or you can disable that feature and have it play only through the HDMI port. And below here you have your digital surround sound audio options. 
you have an energy saver option that will turn off your display after a set timer. And you have 54 various languages to choose from. It doesn't have any root switch, hardware monitor, built-in screen rotation, Samba server, power key definition option, Google Assistant, navigation bar or status bar settings. I checked for updates using the wireless update feature and there was none at this time. Out of the box, these are the apps that come pre-installed. Most noteworthy among these are the Miracast app, wireless updates, the Exo player we saw in a recent video, the Kodi media player, Netflix and the Android TV version of YouTube. So I'll install some additional apps needed to benchmark and perform my live demonstrations and continue. So I'm back and I've installed all my apps. Some from the Play Store and others I had to install the ABK using a flash drive. Please note, the Google Play Store is restricted in certain ways where certain apps that are supposed to be listed there for download isn't and that forces you to install them via APK. One such app is the alternative navigation bar I'm using called the Menu Button app. This app is usually found on the Play Store but due to some weird restriction, it's not available, so I had to sideload it. This is the best alternative navigation bar for TV boxes, and to learn how to install and use it, see the link in the description below this video. One thing I noticed about this box's interface is that it's really quick and snappy. As I navigate through its various menus, I notice that it's quicker than usual. Before proceeding with the demonstrations, let's look at its system and hardware information. Its manufacturer is Droid Logic, and the main board is the OHM. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.1. Its CPU, the Amlogic S905X4, is a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU clocked at 2.0GHz but configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit ABIs, which means it can only run 32-bit applications. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 GPU with OpenGL ES version 3.2 support. For its Wi-Fi connectivity, it has dual-band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Its operating system is Android 11 and the box is not rooted, but it shows here that it's rooted, but that's incorrect. On the devices, it shows that its GPU has a Vulkan version 1.1 support, which enhances its graphics handling performance. On the temperature, it shows that the box runs between 55 to 65 degrees Celsius under normal usage, and this can increase into the 70s during 3D gaming. On the codex, it has all the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos and videos with digital surround sound audio formats as you can identify the DTS HD, the AV1 and the Dolby Vision decoders. So that's its system and hardware information. To confirm its root status, here the root checker app shows that it's not rooted and this box does not have a root switch. This does not affect the streaming of movies and TV shows in any way. This pertains more to gamepad key mapping apps and other specialized apps. When it comes to streaming movies and TV shows from your popular premium streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and Disney+, Plus, despite you having a premium subscription that would allow you to view their content in HD or 4K quality, this box can only show their movies in basic 480p resolution because it does not have the required DRM support from Google. This box is not fully Google certified and it only has Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection that will protect premium streaming services from piracy. It requires Wide Vine Level 1 with HDCP 2.2 protection for that to happen. The box comes pre-installed with the Android TV version of YouTube but you cannot navigate it with a mouse pointer only a direction pad, so I uninstalled it and installed the version on the APK Pure App Store and it works to play movies in HD and 4K and it also triggers the HDR feature on my TV.
For those interested in casting their mobile devices will be interested in the included Miracast app. The app installed on this box is the official version that mirrors your mobile device in HD quality. However, when I connected my cell phone, it connects, but there is only audio with no video. This means that the only option you are left with is connecting using the default casting feature in Android that only has a 480p resolution. For those interested in customizing their launcher would have known for the longest while that the Nova launcher has not been updated and could not work on boxes with the Amlogic S905X3 chipset running on Android 9 and subsequent versions. Well, Nova has recently updated their software and has released their new upgraded launcher called Nova 7. So this is what it looks like and all features are working such as long click menu pop-ups, drag and drop shortcuts and custom wallpapers. However, live wallpapers don't work on this box. For those who value the screen rotation option that rotates the screen to portrait mode to be used with vertical screens when applying digital signage, unfortunately, this box does not support that screen rotation function. It's now time to test its 4K HDR video playback capability using the VLC player.
and only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points the mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee Mateo Loof prizing presence on the bench as well So the 4K HDR videos played ok, there was no sticking or freezing during the playback and the HDR feature was activated on my TV. Next I'll test its AV1 video format playback capability using the included EXO player. This is Dolby Cinema. It's where the most advanced cinematic technology you've ever experienced begins. This is Dolby Atmos. 
With the included EXO player that's designed to play the AV1 video format, the quality of the video playback was of a very high standard and these videos also activated the HDR feature on my TV. To end the video playback segment, I will now test for digital surround sound audio format using the MX player, because the VLC player, the Kodi Media player and the EXO player are not recognizing certain formats. The MX player Pro on the other hand is the only player that I got to read most of the formats. In this test, I'm looking for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, HD Master Audio, THX and Dolby True HD. To perform this test, I have the box connected in HDMI pass-through configuration. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around Executioners, judges. Welcome to. So from this test it confirms that this box has a Dolby Atmos, Dolby Surround and a DTS. However, I could not get DTS-X, HD Master Audio and Dolby True HD. I will now perform a quick test to confirm that we have surround sound formats through the optical audio port. Executioners, judges. When connected via optical audio, I cannot get any Dolby audio formats. The only format I'm getting is DTS. 
Before I proceed to the gaming segment, I will connect a 1TB portable SSD via the USB port and attempt to convert it to shared internal storage. This will expand its internal storage by 1TB. So to access the shared internal storage information after you formatted your drive, you would need to access the advanced settings area that you can only access if you install an alternative launcher. So if I open the Nova 7 launcher and click on settings and head over to storage, here you would see on the shared internal storage you have over 1 terabyte. You cannot view this information on the default settings area. So, to demonstrate its 3D gaming graphics rendering performance, I would like to recommend that if you intend to play games on this box that you apply a cooling fan, because from the very first game I noticed temperatures rising into the 90s. This is expected because its CPU is clocked at 2.0 GHz. So the games played smoothly, its graphics was of a high quality, and with no root access, I managed to get one gamepad key mapping app to work, and that is the Octopus Key Mapper. Let's now take a look at its benchmarks and where it places on the rankings chart. First, its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. Its RAM copy speed is 3415 megabytes per second. Its internal storage read speed is 163 megabytes per second and its write speed is 124. So we are starting to see why its interface is so quick and responsive. Its Wi-Fi band and LAN speed test revealed that it has a maximum bandwidth on its 5 GHz band and on its LAN port. Its 2.4 GHz band only achieved 39% of my maximum bandwidth of 150 megabits per second. This test also confirms that its LAN port is a gigabit LAN port. A new test I'm introducing is a web browser speed benchmark. The benchmark is called Jetstream 2 and it's hosted by the browserbench.org website and it performs a comprehensive test by executing advanced web applications and it gives you a score in the end. So in this test, the box scored 18.3. This data is early, so I can't speak to whether it's good or bad in comparison to other boxes, but the data will be added to my rankings chart going forward. In the Antutu benchmark, it scored 96,031. This is a pretty high score for this box, and it's a direct result of its CPU speed clocked at 2.0 GHz, and why its user interface is quick and responsive. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, it scored 782 single core and 1994 multi core. These scores are consistent with what we are seeing from similar S905 X4 models. In the 3 d Mark Gamers Bench GPU graphics benchmark, it scored 5923 in the iStorm Extreme test, 588 in the Slingshot test, 
and 371 in the Slingshot Extreme Test with Vulcan support. These scores are good scores, well within range of what we are seeing from similar models. So that was the last of the benchmarks, let's now see where it places on my rankings chart. So after entering the scores on my rankings chart, the X96X4 is at position 19 in reference to Antutu benchmark scores, which is a very good place to be for a TV box running on this new chipset. But please keep in mind, this ranking is only based on its hardware performance. This does not rank its firmware and user experience rating. For that, keep watching to the end of this video for the pros and cons. You can view this chart on my blog where you can maximize it and compare various scores. I also provide price comparison links right here. See the link in the description below this video. So in summary, the X96X4 has one of the fastest firmware among S905X4 models. It's got high benchmarks and its interface is very quick and responsive. It runs on the latest Android 11 operating system. It plays 4K videos really well. It streams movies and TV shows whether premium or from alternative sources without issues. It has a great gaming performance and it has a cool RGB lighting feature which makes it attractive. Some of its drawbacks identified in the video are it's not rooted and it does not have a root switch. It does not have its own navigation bar or status bar which leaves you to install an alternative. The Google Play Store is restricted and missing lots of essential apps that we normally use. Its audio decoders such as DTS-X, HD Master Audio and Dolby True HD are not being detected by popular media players. It's not fully Google certified or has the digital right to play premium streaming services above basic 480p quality. And due to its CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz, which is a good thing, it however results in high overheating when playing Android games, and I highly recommend you use a cooling fan in this instance. For normal operations such as streaming movies and TV shows, it does not overheat. So that wraps up my review of the X96X4 TV box. If you are interested in this model, you can get it on Amazon and AliExpress using the links provided in the description below from SZ Box at the lowest prices online. Using any of my affiliate links in the description, on my website or on the price comparison pages, support this channel directly and provide the means for me to acquire the latest Android boxes for review. So thanks in advance for your support. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation. As always, to be notified when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to be notified via your mobile phone and in your email. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.